Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. I just made a video where I went over all this stuff in here and talked about how everything's lined up. I called it a reality check so that I can get it back together. At this point, I'm not going to remove the timing chain cover or the timing chain cover gasket, but I am going to remove the timing chain tensioner. A lot of people just call that the cam chain tensioner. Before I remove the cam chain tensioner, you can see that there's a lot of tension on this cam chain. I can't push it down no matter how, how hard I push. So for the rest of this procedure, this is going to be at 125 degrees before top dead center, and that won't move. This might be overkill, but I'm set, setting up a safety procedure by putting this 19 millimeter on the crank bolt. Then I can slide this arm out like this to there. Then I'm gonna get a zip tie and put a zip tie between here, this hole and that. I'm just gonna slide the zip tie up through here. Actually, that's my $10 Harbor Freight to the rescue tool. See, I might have to secure it a little up here more, but it seems to be holding, let me check that. So I'm looking in this hole to make sure I didn't move it when I was zip tying. Still lined up on the mark, 125 degrees before top dead center. So this is the bolt that came out of that hole and I just happened to have a, lo a longer six millimeter. So I'm gonna screw that into here. So just a quick aside on the strength of bolts. If you have the diameter of your bolt here, it doesn't get any stronger when you thread it in one and a half times the diameter, that's as strong as it's gonna get. So since it's this big around, I better screw it in at least one and a half times the diameter, which is probably there by my fingernail. So I'll screw it up there basically about a little over a quarter inch. That's if this was being pulled super hard, but I'm just gonna put a zip tie in it. I doubt I'm gonna ruin any threads. So let's see if I can create some force going in this way with this zip tie. That'll hold my wrench from falling out. That's pretty good. Make sure I set the result in force equal to zero. That's pretty secure. I can't pull this out at all. So it's good to eliminate any variables. I would say the equation for this was a, a plus B plus C equals 10. Now by tying this down, I get rid of the C. I just have A plus B equals 10. Only two instead of three. That's nice. I don't have to worry about this spinning on me while I'm messing around with the cam chain and the shafts and everything. So now that I've secured my crankshaft, I can get back over here to this cam chain tensioner and get that off. So these bolts take a five millimeter Allen key. I'm gonna go ahead and try to break free the inside one first. Wasn't too tight. Let's go ahead and crack the outside one too. So I've been planning ahead on this job for about two months and I, somebody said you need a st stubby Allen key so I bought this park tool I already showed you on one of the other videos. It's just shorter here. I'm able to get it out a little with this, especially when it gets towards the end, it's not taking much pressure to turn. Okay, I've got it loose. I'm just gonna grab it with my fingers and pull it out. There it is. I really wanted to take both bolts out at the same time because there's a pressure coming back like this. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna just do the outside bolt. Okay, here we go. I might try to hold it back here with my hand a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna do any good, but depends on how strong the spring is. Seems to be helping to hold it with my left hand while I unscrew it on the right. Yeah, it definitely helps keep it parallel. I'm pushing with my left index finger while I unscrew this bolt, and I'm trying to keep the gap even, just so it doesn't bind. 
There you go, you saw how it sprang out against my finger. I think we're almost there. There we go. All right, that bolt's free. Oh, it did pop. There it goes. Let me get this bolt out of the way. This one. Looks like it's exactly the same as the other one. Now, hopefully it just comes out and down. There we go. There it is. So we'll look at this a little closer. Looks like the S1 was at the bottom. I don't think it matters, but we'll, it's always good to look at which way is up. So let's take a look up in here. I do have a new gasket ready to go, but this one actually looks pretty good. I'll, I'll examine it a little closer later. See if we can see in the hole. So let's take a little closer at the cam chain tensioner without it. Now that it's out of the bike, here's the two bolts. We already saw those. They're the same height. And then this guy here looks pretty symmetrical. So let me get a wrench and we'll look at this further, wipe off the grease. Probably would have been better to crack this free when it's on the bike, but it's a 10 millimeter. Hopefully it just comes loose. I can't do that with my hand right there. So make sure you crack that free before you take it out. So I'm gonna have to, I'm definitely not putting this back in. So I just clamped two bolts in my vise. I slid this down on there. So slide it down on these two bolts. And I can get my 10 millimeter in here like this. There we go. That loosened it up. Much better than channel locks. I don't scratch anything up. So I didn't ding anything up by doing that, which is nice. If I was being lazy, I could have grabbed it with channel locks like this, but it would have put marks in there. That's why I did the vice thing. So now we can just unscrew it with our fingers. Just one drop of oil there.